Well, this was awesome. So uh, thanks all for coming. This has been uh, eerily awesome to sit here for a whole day and hear people talk about your thing. Um, I've never actually sat through a happy talk before by someone else than me. <laughs> so it was, it was a little weird. It was like people giving advice and suggestions and things I didn't think about. And it was like, hmm, OK. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, ADO, which we officially launched this morning. And um, the slides are just for uh, visual entertainment. Um, it's a new thing. I, I, I switched to uh, um, index cards as my new, my new system for giving talks. Um, so you don't get distracted, but I think I've done a bad job distracting people with my slides today. So The, the theme for EPI 8 is really um, um, productive resentment of my users. <laughs> um, basically, everything in, in, in 8 is kind of like a, a, a fuck you to a request from someone. You're like, um, can we do this? I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to break everything now. Um, but, but basically, the, 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 we, we hit a critical mass a few months ago uh, with the framework and the community, and it got so big that, and, and, uh, that my OCD was flaring up because I'm not used to having over 100 unread notifications in my GitHub account. Like, you know, you wake up in the morning and there's over 100 of them. And like my OCD is like, I can't deal with it. So I start thinking about, OK, I need to start moving things to other people. Like, like clearly, like I'm not keeping up. Uh, the team is not keeping up. We need more people. And at some point, you know, even a company like Walmart will say, um, yeah, we're not going to spend $20 million on open source um, for one project. So we need to get people on the outside to, to come and participate. So I start thinking about, OK, how do I keep leading this, this framework without doing all the work, which meant modularizing it and moving stuff out. So it's no longer part of the, the core framework, so other people can work on it. And there are areas of, of habit that I really don't like. Um, not because they're bad, it's just like I don't like working on them. Uh, views? Anything that has to do with front end? <laughs> no. Um, I don't want to work on it. Uh, I'm really sick of the proxy stuff. Like, you know, after last Black Friday, like I don't want to do any proxy anymore. Um, it's a really important functionality people would love, but I don't want to work on it anymore. Um, all the file system stuff, uh, serving static resources and directories, these are things I really don't want to deal with anymore. But those are also areas where people have requests, and they have, and they're all unfortunately very reasonable. They're all requests that make sense, that will make things better. Um, sometimes they're bugs, and I really, I, I, I have no interest in doing this anymore. Like I've been doing. I have this stuff for four years now, and I would like to do other things. So how do I move those pieces out without having to constantly babysit them? Because if it's a core part of the framework, then I can't just give someone else it and hope everything is OK, and then you know, make things the upgrades will just happen. So, so version 8 is really a focus on enabling more people to do more things, both in the core functionality and also outside. So it's really a, a release that is uh, meant to, to allow me to say, you know what, you like that? Go do it. I don't have to do it anymore. You can do it now. Um, and so today, I'm going to touch some of the, the key new features and changes that I think will enable that transformation of, of how we work in the, in the, in the ecosystem. Um, the the uh, release notes are quite long. Um, and the, this like, I think like it's like 70 or 80,000 GitHub changes, addition and remove in, in this release. So it's, it's gigantic. I think there's 140 uh, issues as part of it. So um, I, I can go and, you know, like last year, not actually last year, this February when I released 2.0. Um, isn't that crazy? Um, 2.0 was February. Um, I, I went to, uh, to uh, um, Washington State, and I, I went to the NDET office, and I gave a, a, like an hour, 10 minute talk going through like every happy two feature there is. Um, so I'm not going to try to do that today. I'm going to keep this uh, shorter. Um, but I kind of want to go through like the main thing. So the biggest change, the most uh, obvious change, um, is that we now have a unified API. So if it, before we had a server API and a plugin API, 
um, and a PAC API. Um, and I know that that confused the hell out of most people. Um, that's all gone. We now have a server API. And that one server API is available everywhere. Um, whether it's when you're creating a server, if you have a server with multiple connections, um, which was a pack in previous version, so if you uh, <coughs> want to open both an API port and a web port on the same installation, which is a very common thing to do, or an HTTP and HTTPS where you redirect from one another, um, that's just a server, and you can add as many connections as you want to the server. So server and pack have been completely unified. I think pack has been one confusing concept for people uh, in previous versions. It was like the, the one of the things that's like, Nobody could really explain, well, what PAC is. So that's gone. It's one API now. And then on the plugin side, we had almost identical APIs between what the server gives you and what the plugin gives you, but not exactly. And there are like, you know, areas where they overlap and areas where they're different. So that's all cleaned up now. It's one API. Um, and actually, if you require Happy, it only exposes the server now. That's it. That's the only thing you can do is create a new server. New server. That's it. Um, so the unified API is going to, I think, is going to make things much easier. I think it's like if you've been using Happy for a while, um, there are some breaking changes in the way configuration is done now, but they're all pretty simple. You know, some arguments moved into uh, options. Um, you you add your your connection by called connection. Um, and by the way, there's nobody's happy about the name connection, like the function name connection in the new version, um, and yet nobody has been able to come up with anything better. So if you come up with anything better, um, I'm happy to add an alias to the function and then slowly we'll move away from the connection name. But so far, it's the best we got, so deal with it. <laughs> All right, so, so that's the unified API. All right. Um, I got a little, a little crazy with Photoshop. Um, second change is, we, I think, is the most important one I think it's also the one that's going to make my life easiest uh, in terms of requests, and that's cascading config. So in previous version, you had your pack config and your server config and your route config and your state config, and some of them overlapped, some of them didn't. Uh, it was really case by case which one is a global config and which one is a per route config and which one you can override and which one you can't. Um, it wasn't very clear. And then if you're in a plugin, some of those configs got overridden by the plugin config for bind or for path. So it was like all those fine, uh, subtle ways in which config works, which makes sense you know, if you're building something over four years and you, you know, people keep asking, oh, can I override that for that route? Oh, OK, I'll go and add that in. So I got a whole bunch of these requests. Um, accumulated and I was like you know what this is just we're doing it wrong uh, and so the new system is basically you create a server you can de provide defaults for everything so you can provide defaults for new connections and within those connections default for um, uh, cookies in the state defaults and you can provide defaults for routes you can default everything you want and then when you get in connection you can override the server connect configuration with the connection configuration. And then in the route, you can override everything. So it's cascading where the, at the end, you get one route config. And in practice, it turns out that almost none of the settings we had were, had anything to do with the server or the connection. They're all route configuration. But they're all defined high up. And what this is really enabling is now plugins can take much more control over things. They don't, you don't have to write a plugin where you say, hey, if you're using my plugin, this is how you have to configure your server first. That's really annoying because the plugin should be its own encapsulated in, like, solution. You don't want to have to keep you know, making outside requirements of, of your developers. You just say, hey, like, just, just require me. You know, that's all you need to do. So the cascading config, now everything. And in things, I move things. so. It's a little obnoxious in terms of now you have this option structure that has connections in it and then there's routes in it. So things moved a little, little sideways in terms of the, the JSON tree. But now you can actually understand exactly what you're influencing. So if, if a setting is about a route and you're putting it as a, as a default in the server, it should say, this is for my route. So when you're reading your config, you understand what is that going to impact. It's not something you have to go to the manual to, uh, to, to understand. The 
Another one that's been, like, I got a lot of requests for um, is promises support. And honestly, I, I've, I never even looked what promises was until like a month ago. And not because I have anything against it, but because I don't have any reason for it. So I keep hearing, oh, it solved the callback, you know, callback nightmare and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, I don't have those problems, so I'm just going to ignore it. Uh, and I've ignored it very successfully for a long time um, until, you know, a lot of people asked for it. And at some point, um, I said, you know what, like, let's see what it actually means to add native support for promises. So I looked at the different uh, requests and I talked to a bunch of people. Um, since the community grew significantly, we have now we have some core committers who are using promises all the time. So now we have people inside of the of the the, the core uh, group that are uh, promoting use of call, callbacks, which we didn't have before. It was very um, uh, homogenic environment before. You know, it was just like you know, just the Walmart people. If we don't use it internally, then we don't use it. Um, so in promises support, we now have native support for in two places. Um, one is you cannot reply with a promise. So if you're in a handler, you can reply with a promise, and when that promise resolves, it will actually um, uh, continue the, the process. People have done plugins to accomplish that, but they're all very awkward and kludgy, and they don't really work well if something breaks in the middle of the process. You end up with this promise that nobody's really paying any attention to at the end. Uh, so now we have native support for that. We also have native support for server methods. So if you like server methods, you can now set a uh, server method that return a, pl uh, a promise um, as well. And talking about server methods, we, um, uh, in, in I think 7.1 or 7.2, I fixed a bug that removed um, undocumented functionality that you can use uh, um, server method without callbacks. So you can use blocking server methods. Um, it was all documented it's not allowed to do. You can't do that. But it worked because the way the code was written, it just worked. So people were using it and using it very happily. And then I broke it in a non-major uh, release. So like I did 7.1 and I broke you know, everybody's code. Uh, and when they came and complained, I said, well, I'm sorry, but the documentation make it very, makes it very clear that you shouldn't have done that. Um, so, I, but I, I didn't quite expect the response I got. I mean, there were a lot of people who complained about it. So in ADO, now we have official support for uh, um, server methods. So now we have promises, callbacks, or no callbacks. Um, and you can use all three of those with caching, and Happy internally will wrap it correctly to make sure that, uh, it, that for its own purposes, it's getting the uh, consistent uh, signature for the function. So we got that in. Another one that's uh, all, all about me, um, I really, really want to move uh, the proxy, the, um, the file system, and the views out of, out of Happy Core. Uh, I mean, if it was up to me, I would make it that you have to you know, install it yourself. But I know, you know those are really, really core functionality in the framework, and people love it that you don't have to do anything but install Happy and get all this out of the box. It adds almost no cost. So if it's there and you're not using it, it doesn't really cost any money, like any, any resources for you unless you're like doing embedding de embedded devices, in which case I think Happy might not be the ideal solution for an embedded device uh, <laughs> framework. Um, but uh, I really want it out. I want to give it to other people and want it out. So in version 7, I got most of it out. So we have three new modules, inert for uh, static files, um, H202 uh, for proxy, and... Um, uh, vision for the view manager. So we got all those out, but the way it was, it was still happy required them, and then happy itself called functions and integrated them with the system. So when you called server.views, uh, it was a native happy function that called, you know, a vision function. And, and I really, I, I've been wanting to move that stuff out for a long time. Um, so what we have now is a new feature called uh, decorate. So in server decorate, you can decorate the server or the reply interface and make it your own. So for example, if you keep finding yourself doing reply and then for success, you always return some JSON structure that says, you know, success equal true and, you know, message equal hooray and whatever it is, and you keep doing that again, 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 you can now um, call server declare and you can basically decorate the reply interface to include the success method. So now you can call reply that success and that's it. You don't have to constantly repeat that code. Um, the same thing with a server. You can add, uh, decorate server so you can add features. So in Happy 8, if you look at the source code of Happy 8, there is no reply.proxy or reply.file. 
There is no uh, file or directory uh, handlers anymore in the source code. It's still there. But what Happy is doing is not Happy is requiring those three modules I mentioned. Those are now full plugins. They're just plain plugins. Happy requiring them automatically for you, and that and those plugins decorate Happy with that extra functionality. What's cool about it, besides me, you know, not having to deal with it anymore, is the fact that now you are on equal footing with what I was able to do before internally. You cannot do anything you want outside. So all the power that we before was um, you know, underscore internal variable, internal facilities that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I, I, exp I use them in other modules because it were, they were all mine. Um, there's none of that anymore. So those plugins are now built completely on, on public API. Um, and, and there's a new feature that um, <laughs> I'm going to use all the time. I don't know other people, but um, uh, you cannot create a server with a minimal flag. And it will not load those plugins by default. So you can actually create a server that has nothing. Um, it doesn't have files or directories or, or views uh, or any of that stuff. You can create a completely bare bone happy server. And that means you can now create your own fork of the file system plugin and, and change uh, native functionality the way you want it to be. Um, a more advanced concept is, is called Realm. Realm is new in Happy 8. I think it's the only really new concept um, in, in the release. Uh, and, and what Realms are, uh, it's really like, this is a very primitive version of what I, my vision is in, in future versions. But what Realms are is, is a way to sandbox plugins to their own ecosystem completely. So you'll be able to define a, a, define a state, a cookie, in a plugin that does not leak outside of the plugin. It will have zero impact on any other plugins you might have. So you can have a plugin that adds a bunch of routes, defines some cookies, uh, add extensions, and none of it will apply to any other plugin. So you can have two plugins that have the same cookie defined. Um, well, not the same, the same name, because that, HTTP is still going to send the same one. But, um, but you'll be able to, to define things that will not leak or overlap between, uh, between different plugins. And the, with the extension, it's really important because a lot of people have been adding extensions um, to their plugin functionality. And the problem is it's very inefficient because now those extensions are running on every other route in the, in the, in the server. And so to avoid that, you go and you add a config that says, only if I mark this as my route in some settings, then run this extension on. So you basically, with every other route, you come in and you say, hey, is this route part of my plugin? Oh, it's not, and I'm not going to run this extension on. Um, it's just more function calls, and function calls are, are expensive uh, in, in JavaScript. So uh, we're trying to avoid that. Um, so that's the future. What Realm is right now is just a way to uh, do a, uh, a two-layer uh, configuration. So when you do server, when you have the server object, server has a realm. And it's a container that has a few properties. You can look at the documentation to see what's in there. There's some settings in there. Uh, and there's an plug area for plugins to put whatever they want in there. When you call register, the server that the register function gets has its own realm. That's different from the, the root server. On that server, there's also server.root, which is the root server, that realm. So in any place you are, you have access to two realms. The server realm, which is the root realm, and then your own plugin realm. Everything you add inside a plugin will default to the local realm. This is how, for example, the view manager works. So if you define a view manager in two plugins and you load them, and they each have their own templates uh, with the same name but, but conflicting meaning, uh, today it works fine because internally Happy will go and resolve it with basically a private version of realms. In 8.0, it's done basically by putting the view manager in the right realm, and then the routes default to that. So I'm not expecting you all to like completely follow what I'm saying right now. I've been playing with this for you know for six months now. Um, but if you really want to see how it works and how it's being used, go to the vision module, uh, which is the the view manager, um, and see how it's implemented. It's basically using uh, realms all the way. Um, it's the, it's really why I fully had to expose the concept uh, out as a public API. In future version, what I really want to do is enhance it to allow you to completely sandbox your plugin as much as it's reasonable within one server. So that's, that's Realms. Um, 
Another one, uh, another big change that, I mean, it's probably not going to be a breaking for most people, but I think it's been causing a lot of pain for people, is logging. Um, logging has been very, very noisy, and it's been very hard for people to say, hey, like, the logging facility is nice, but like, Happy is generating so much logging noise that if I'm trying to also add my app noise to it, it and then the, the, the filtering, it's, it's just too much going on. So we did a couple of things. One, we split logging, so internal logging now has its own emit, emitter event than your app logging. So those are two split now. So if you uh, subscribe to request, you're only going to get when you call request log, you'll get those events. You're not going to get all the internal stuff that Happy generates. Um, I got rid of about half of the internal logging that was just stupid, not adding any value. Um, clean up all, the, all the, the tags for the event. So now you can actually, uh, and, and also document all of them. So now there's a page in the API doc that tells you every single event that Happy will meet internally, and you can now uh, um, see if you want to subscribe it or not, and what to do about it. Um, it's a lot quieter. And and the last one, it's a it's a small one that Reed has been waiting for for a long time, and that's the uh, 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 bring your own uh, bring your own listener. So basically, um, we have the Node HTTP server. And you know, first of all, there are, there are, there are new ones now. There, you know, there's one for speedy HTTP2. People want to have different implementation of, this, of, the, of the HTTP listener. Um, and as long as they have compatible API with the node one, why shouldn't you be able to use it? Up until now, Happy created its own. It was internal. Uh, it only exposed it after the fact. So if you did server that listener, you can get the actual node object. But there was no way to affect that. But, and also, um, Happy kind of like you know, required to start it its own listener. It would not allow you to do anything with it. And there are environments where your, your deployment requires you to actually do something else. Uh, if you have an environment, like you know, the, for example, the Yao environment, um, it's a platform feature. So you provide the platform with a HTTP server, and the platform called listen on it with their own, their own port when they find it. And that allows them to hook it in the right routing tables and the right load balancers and security purposes. Um, so now you can do that, and my hope is that beyond just the deployment feature that will, this will give people, it also means that um, people can experiment with alternative uh, forms of, of um, uh, transport. So you can try to run Happy with Speedy 2, uh, with Speedy or with, with HTTP 2, and see, see what that, that looks like um, without having uh, Happy to like, natively support those features. Um, and again, uh, the goal is really to enable people to do more on their own without having to re come back and request um, core features uh, and, and kind of make the surface area of core smaller, easier to maintain, um, and, and also uh, not put me uh, as, 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 a, as an opinion that matters of how you want to build your app. Um, allow you to design the features the way you want them, and, and between all those new facilities and, and changes, I think that you now finally have the power to kind of fully make this framework your own and, and decide how you're going to deploy it. Um, so at the beginning, uh, uh, most of these changes, not all of these changes, came from basically um, productive uh, resentment of, of you know, people asking for more and more and more. And, um, and because it accumulated, because there were so many open issues at some point, I think I had like 80 open happy issues at some point, um, it actually was productive because I was able to stop and say, okay, here's the big picture of what people are asking for. And I was able to start seeing patterns of word, what the community is asking for. It also gave people time, because usually I, you know, I used to close issues within like a day. So there's no discussion involved. Like someone asked for something, I say, I don't think so, I close it. And that's it. So, because I, 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 my OCD doesn't allow me to leave an issue open for more than five minutes. It's just like it's there. I can't deal with it. So this one, this way, by basically being overwhelmed, give people more time to discuss it. And also, we open some discuss channels so people can actually have long conversations that are not closed in five minutes. Um, all that accumulated together and and really gave a good picture of where the happy community is today. Um, and and so this release is kind of like my official uh, handover of a lot of functionality back to the community and say, hey, you know what? This is no longer going to be me who's going to make the decision. Uh, we actually going to have a community that, that runs the project and, and decides on those things. And um, my, my influence is going to be on the, the semantic of the plugin API. But beyond that, um, that's just the, 
the, the, the mechanism, but all the meaningful work is now fully open and, and empowers other people to really take control and, and, and experiment with things that before were hard to do. Like, for example, like the, the command line CLI is a good one, where we didn't have any innovation on the command line and the manifest in probably over a year and a half now. Um, and it's been like an area that like I just had no interest in working on. Also, it's an area where it's kind of hard to to experiment with because people are using it for their production. That's like the, the closest part of the of the framework to your ops people. So the ops are not going to want that kind of kind of breaking changes in how the config file is done because that's painful. So that's an area that you know we moved it out, and now there's opportunity for people to experiment and try new things and see what works for them and offer competing solutions um, for how to deploy this. So that, those are the main things. Um, I'm happy to uh, uh, take a question if you have afterwards. Um, but uh, please try it out, enjoy, report bugs, um, ask any questions you want. Um, never be shy of asking and opening issues. You know, open issues for whatever you feel like opening issues. Op issues are free. It only cost GitHub some storage money, so we don't care about that. Um, and uh, yep, use it. So thank you very much, and thanks for coming.